there are a lot of scenes that you may not know about which were left out of the Dune movie. So let's get stuck right into this Dune deleted scenes deep dive. There is a balcony scene between Paul and Duke Leto, his father. Paul looks out over the city and to the dunes beyond. The saint Rebe, Leto says. Paul turns to see his father join him. That's what they call you, isn't it? Voice from the outer world. He sees something in Paul's face, his jaunty tone sobers. It troubles you. Legend is a pretty word for a lie, Paul says. I think you're afraid it might be true, Leto replies. How can I make my way if my destiny was written before I was born? Leto joins him at the railing to look out over Arrakis. If I tell you one day you'll find yourself on a mountain top, what does that change? You still have to climb the mountain. Destiny grants us nothing and takes nothing away. We have to fight and bleed for the future we want. Because when all's said and done, there's only one way to find out if a prophecy is true. We earn it. Paul nods, like a weight has been lifted, and their formality gives way to a hug, because Paul is scared, and Leto knows, and loves him no matter who he's meant to be. Prophecies be damned. This would have been a fantastic scene, I really wish they'd included it in the final cut. Paul retires for the night to his bedroom and rests. But the night isn't over for Duke Leto. In the war room of the Arakeen residency, Duke Leto gives Duncan Idaho a signal using the Atreides combat sign language, which translates to leave at dawn, give this message to the Fremen. The Duke gives him a tiny object, and then he signals, trust no one. In the Arakeen barracks at night, Gurney leans his balisette against his shoulder, and he begins to sing. And this is how the scene goes. I remember salt smoke from a beach fire, the seagulls crying on the strand. Now worlds away in stranger skies, they call no more, they call no more. You need to sleep. No, not like that. She smiles knowing what he wants, then she says, close your eyes. I remember perfume on a silken veil, lover's arms pale against the dusk. Now worlds away, those winsome ladies. They call no more, they call no more. I remember garrisons of old campaigners, years washed with weariness and wine. Now worlds away, the war's forgotten. They call no more, they call no more. Then the Atreides are attacked in the night. Leto has been drugged, and in his bedroom, Jessica has been gagged and tied. She lies on the floor in her nightgown, ankles tied, wrists bound behind her back, mouth gagged, and her eyes closed. All we can hear is the Baron, and he says, No use pretending. I know you're awake. Dr. Yui controlled your dosage precisely. Then Jessica's eyes snap open. Yui. That's when she discovers he is the traitor. The Baron wears oddly feminine shoes. He leans over Jessica, checking her bindings, his belly pressing down on her. His jeweled fingers linger on the gag between her lips. A pity to stop this mouth. We could have such an interesting conversation. But I know the power of your voice, the Baron says. On a balcony at night in the Arakeen residency, Paita de Vries stands watching with a bound and battered thufa Hawat, guarded by four Sardaukar, and he gloats. Checkmate, old friend. Hawat, who is humiliated, doesn't answer. There is quite a long scene between Thufir Hawat and Paita de Vries, where he gloats and talks about the grand plan of the Harkonnen and how short-sighted Hawat was, blinded by love for the Atreides. And you can check out the full scene in my Dune Extended Edition video. It also seems that there was a scene between Paita de Vries and Lieutenant Lamville, where Paita tortures Lanville, who is supposed to fight Fade in part 2, in the Gladiator Arena. As I've mentioned before, Dr. Yui's beheading was supposed to be much more gruesome. The Baron lifts the carving knife and saws off Yui's head, so brutally and swiftly that Yui has no time to struggle. A spray of blood spatters the servants, who dare not move. Then the Baron shows Yui's head to Paita and lets it fall. He then swings the knife slowly around theatrically to Leto. In a spice vision, Paul sees a vision of Chani in the future. She's standing at the edge of some natural wonder, a vast swath of desert, and she seems more mature than in previous visions. She's now dressed in a long linen dress. Lisan al Ghaib, she says. She lovingly motions for Paul to join her. Bless your coming and going. We then begin to hear the sounds of roaring, which seems to be a sandworm, and she says, May your passage cleanse the world. So this is a scene where Chani is showing Paul a sandworm. 
Chani then asks a question, will you keep it for your people? And this is the scene that reveals the fighting between the Sardaukar and the Fremen warriors below. And the scene in the tent where Paul describes what he sees to Jessica, his mother. He had different dialogue. There's a crusade coming. When Jessica asks him, you're afraid, what do you see that you fear? He was supposed to say, holy war, spreading across the universe like unquenchable fire. A warrior religion that waves the Atreides banner. Fanatical legions worshipping at the shrine of my father's skull. A crusade in my name. My name. That's the future. It's coming. And in the Dune draft, it was a crusade, a jihad in my name. In the scene where Idaho confronts Kynes, where she says, I am commanded to say nothing, to see nothing. And then Idaho says, the Emperor sent us here to die. Kynes was supposed to reply, God created Arrakis to test the faithful. In the courtyard of the Arakeen residency, a high-tech decontamination cell stands in the middle of the courtyard. Something is trapped inside, thrashing and bellowing like a monster. It's the Baron. Raban stands watching wide-eyed, a technician beside him, both terrified by what is happening inside that cell. Raban asks, how did he survive? The technician says, his shield slowed the gas, limited his exposure, and his body mass is... um, majestic. So, will he live? Raban says. Do you want him to? Asks the technician. Then Raban leans close and says, If he dies, everyone you love dies. This would have been a great extra scene of Raban. We are then supposed to see the Baron again, after the scene where Paul and Jessica are flying into the Coriolis storm. So this oil slick bath was supposed to be a bath where he heals from the poison gas. Why else would he be in it? And there were scenes with the Baron being much more naked, which was actually a wish of Stellan Skarsgård. He wanted much more of those scenes in the movie. Of course, there are other scenes that were shot that we will never know about. There is also concept art of Paul on Caladan walking in the forest at night, taking a stroll, wearing a hooded raincoat, surrounded by Atreides soldiers. There are around 130 deleted VFX shots from the Dune movie, and there could be more non-VFX shots removed overall. We may get to see them in some capacity in the future. Thank you for watching my deep dive into the deleted scenes of Dune. If you like these kinds of videos, please don't forget to give me a like rating, share it with as many people as you can, and spread the word. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can support me on my Patreon, or join my channel as a member, where you'll receive access to exclusive content, secret content, and more. Thank you to my Patreons and channel members for your support. If you want to see more of the deleted scenes in detail, check out my Dune Extended Edition video. And until next time, see you soon.